I've been getting a ton of emails from people asking me for my book recommendations. And if you don't know this about me, I am a voracious reader. So coming up with a top recommended list was no easy task for me. But of all of the books that I've read, there's been only some of them that have really significantly changed my life, especially helping me through the difficult phases of my spiritual awakening. And so that's what I've put together in this video for you. This video is going to have some, some uh, books that you've heard of and some that you have haven't heard of. But one thing is certain about this top 20 that I put together for you. It's the capacity that these books have to help you through any difficulties in your spiritual awakening and to make your spiritual awakening more peaceful and more joyful. Are you ready to get to this list? Let's do this! Roll trailer! Hello beautiful soul! This is Christina Lopes, The Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and hit the bell so you're always notified when I put out new content. This week I'm bringing a top 20 recommended book list for you. And this book list has been specifically curated with books that significantly impacted my life and helped me through sometimes the challenging phases of my spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakenings are beautiful, but they also have some challenges. And these books helped me through some really rough patches and helped me kind of stay on track in my spiritual awakening without freaking out too much. So here we go to the top 20 books that I recommend to help you through your spiritual awakening. Let's get started. Okay, the first book is A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. And A New Earth was an interesting book because I read it way before my spiritual awakening and I didn't get it the first time around. <laughs> but this book is really and was really transformational in my life. Eckhart Tolle and Michael Singer, which I'm gonna talk about in this video later on, are probably my two favorite teachers about uh, the ego and the mind. They're wonderful mind and ego teachers. So this, The New Earth, was a beautiful book. It really helped me transcend and go beyond the mind, understand the inner workings of the mind, and how it so many times sabotages us. So A New Earth is a perfect place to start. Sometimes not the place to start because it's not an easy book at first, but this is a must-have for people who are going through a spiritual awakening, and it really was transformational in my own journey. Number two is The Celestine Prophecy by James Redfield. Now this is uh, one of the top spiritual books I think ever read uh, and it's a fictional book and I love to learn about spirituality through fiction because what fiction does is it kind of opens your mind to the possibilities that life can be a little bit different than you think it is. And The Celestine Prophecy is a beautiful story about a uh, professor that goes to Peru in search of a lost ancient manuscript. And the whole story is very beautiful. James Redfield is a wonderful writer. And the, the whole story kind of brings in so many spiritual truths and so many spiritual understanding and wisdom that you can use in your everyday life. So uh, the Celestine Prophecy, there's a whole series of them. It starts with the Celestine Prophecy. Read the whole series if you want. I think there are four books in the series. But the Celestine Prophecy is where to start, and it's a wonderful way for you to come into your spirituality through storytelling. Yeah, I love storytelling. Book number three is The Last Laugh by Arjuna Ardag. And this is another great story, kind of like the Celestine Prophecy. It's another fictional story by a spiritual teacher. Um, Arjuna has a lot of other books out, I think, and he um, he's pretty well known in the spiritual circle. So he uh, wrote this book. It's a fictional book. You may not have heard of it because it's. I feel like this is a kind of uh, book that isn't out there a lot. But in any case, it's a wonderful story again, and it follows this guy that's about to commit suicide because his life is just a mess, and he finds a most unlikely guru named Joey. <laughs> and so the book is kind of this, uh, it's kind of this urban spiritual storytelling, and it was wonderful. I still have quotes from this book that I use in my everyday life. That's how great this book is. So uh, uh, this book is amazing also for the storytelling capacity. And it's kind of like the Celestine Prophecy, its capacity to just open you up to the possibilities of life through storytelling. So I hope you like this one. Number four is The Anatomy of Spirit by Carolyn Mays. And this book, a little bit change in energy, so this book isn't fiction. 
This is by renowned spiritual teacher and medical intuitive Carolyn Mays, and she takes her experience, her decades-long experience in working with people who have been diagnosed with physical issues or psychological issues, and trying to understand those issues from the prism of the seven chakras or the seven energy systems. And Carolyn Mays has a really unique way of looking at the chakra system. I've learned so much through this book. I have a ton of passages in this book highlighted of particular interest that I love in this book is her ability to not only talk about the chakras and how they impact your life, not just in terms of physical illness, but in terms of everything, how the chakras impact your life and how our evolution of consciousness is actually occurring chakra by chakra, even on a cultural and a world, uh, in a world planetary sense. So this is a great book. This is a must have book. It's a bit more technical. It's a little bit of a slower read, but there is so much wisdom here and I know it will come in handy for you. Number five is The Surrender Experiment uh, by Michael Singer. This has to be one of my all time favorite books ever. <laughs> But right now in this, uh, in, in this list and in this recommended list video, I'm putting the surrender experiment here because this book, Michael Singer and, and Tosha Silver, which I'm going to talk about later on in this video. These are my two favorite teachers, um, that teach surrender. So these are by far my two favorite teachers on the art of surrendering. And Michael Singer, you may have heard of another book of his that's also on my list here, The Untethered Soul. The Surrender Experiment came out really when I was absolutely needing it. So I was having a difficult time in my spiritual awakening. I was having a really hard time letting go of control. My ego just wanted to control everything. I was just a little bit of a mess. And I remember asking the universe, please, I don't know how to surrender more. Show me. And boom, <laughs> right there on my social media feed appears this new book that was at the time, I think this was in 2015. It was called The Surrender Experiment and it was Michael Singer's life story. Story. This is a biography. So it's just so cool because when you read this story, it, it's, it's mind boggling how Michael Singer's life has actually turned out and the things that he's done. It's just mind boggling. It's impossible to actually, actually make this stuff up. So this is one of my favorite books of all time. It teaches you surrender. It teaches you to just let go. When I finished reading this book, I remember I just let out this sigh of relief. Oh, because it was like, oh my God, there's this, there's this beautiful universe that I can trust and that loves me so much. And if Michael Singer can do it, so can I. <laughs> so the surrender experiment, a must read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Number six is the book Change Me Prayers by Tosha Silver. I just talked about Tosha Silva as my second favorite uh, teacher on the art of surrendering. And Change Me Prayers is a really cool little book. It's just little, little chapters or daily meditations or little daily essays that she writes about her life. She's a great writer. It's really funny. She's really funny and witty. And what Change Me Prayers is all about is she just tells stories and within those stories, she comes up with these prayers that help us surrender to whatever divine will wants for us. Each chapter has a different prayer and it's really cool because I had the same sensation when I was reading Change Me Prayers. It's just, I would just breathe this deep, deep sigh of relief because Tosha Silver's life is pretty extraordinary also, just like Michael Singer's. And it's through the art of surrender that they've gotten there. And I really identify a lot with surrendering to life because at the end of the day, the universe, the intelligence that made you, it's so wise, it's so infinite, and it could bring you so much more than your mind thinks <laughs> it wants. All right, so Change Me Prayer is a great little book to have at your, on your nightstand so that you can say your the certain prayers every day to help you release control of life, to help you surrender, surrender to the wisdom of the universe. There's number six. Number seven is The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer also. So The Untethered Soul was actually the first Michael Singer book that I read. And kind of like Eckhart Tolle, I love Michael Singer's teachings on the ego and the limitations of the mind and how to go beyond the mind. But he does this by helping you understand the nature of the mind, the nature of the ego, why it builds it, its sense of identity. And then it's very good at kind of helping you go beyond the, the ruminations of the mind and to free yourself, to have a more free life, to have a life that's not kind of confined by the control of the mind. 
The Untethered Soul, I'm pretty sure, is one of the top uh, spiritual books ever uh, uh, out there with the most read. I, I don't know if it's the most read, but I know it's one of the top uh, uh, books in the spirituality genre. So if you haven't read it, grab a copy. This is a great book. It's a short book, and it'll really help you kind of start quieting the mind and centering the ego so you can live a more fulfilling life. Number eight is the book, The Way to Love by Anthony DeMello. <laughs> now this book has an interesting story in my life. I actually came upon this book where when I, when my marriage had fallen apart and I was sitting in the waiting room of my psychotherapist in the US and my life was a complete mess and I was sitting there waiting for my psychotherapy session to start and I looked on the table and there was this little book called The Way to Love and I grabbed it and I kind of just opened it up. I didn't really read it. My psychotherapist called me into the office and I went about my day, but I never forgot that book and when I got home, I downloaded it and I started reading it. Now for those of you that don't know, Anthony DeMello was a Jesuit priest. He was a really challenging spiritual teacher. So you may or may not be ready for him depending uh, on you know where you are in your spiritual journey. He was a very challenging teacher but he was a very matter of fact teacher. And The Way to Love is a book about how to love, really how to love. And I will never forget one of the quotes in that book. He says something like, um, the only way for you to love is when you are alone. <laughs> And I remember that when I read that, I actually put the book down because it irritated me because I was going through a really difficult phase in my life and I didn't understand how you could only love when you were alone. <laughs> but the whole book then kind of clarified things for me. He was a Jesuit priest, so this book, there's a lot of passages uh, from the Bible, but he interprets them in a very mystical way. So you don't have to be Christian to love this book and understand it. And this book is without question, really the book that helped me understand unconditional love and how to live it, how to go beyond what we think is love and, and isn't love, what unconditional love really is and how to live it. So the way to love from one of my favorite spiritual teachers, Anthony DeMello. Number nine is the book Shaman, Healer, Sage by Alberto Villoldo. And this book came into my life because I have a, a lot of interest in shamanism. I have a really strong soul connection with shamanism, especially from the Inca tradition of Peru. And this book came to me when I was really needing to heal from profound childhood trauma, from sexual abuse. And I remember I started reading Alberto Villoldo's book. Alberto Villoldo is a Western anthropologist, but he was actually trained and he spent decades working with shamans in Peru and in South America especially in Peru. And so he brings all this knowledge from shamans and he puts it on paper. And this book is amazing. It helped me heal from significant trauma that I wasn't able to kind of release on my own. So his books were outstanding, especially this one. So if you have anything that you need to heal from, if you have anything, any kind of trauma that you feel like is still unresolved, that you haven't been able to really get down deep into the trauma and let it go and heal it and let it go, finally, this is the book for you. Alberto Villoldo is a wonderful, wonderful teacher. I love all his books, but this one especially. Number 10 is The Sacred Science by Nick Polizzi. And so this book, uh, it was a documentary first, then the book came out. And this book is really extraordinary. It also follows uh, shamanism, but in a really cool way. Nick basically took a group of terminally ill patients from the US and he flew them down into South America, I think Peru, um, if I remember correctly. And what he did was they were immersed uh, with a shaman being treated in the traditional shamanic way for their illnesses that were incurable back in the US. So they were all terminally ill or at least incurable. Um, and so the, the book follows the story of how all of these souls, how their lives turned out and what happened in this time that they were in South America being treated by shamans. This is another wonderful book for you to get an understanding of how trauma affects us, how we can release trauma and how shamans and the shamanic traditions deal with disease and trauma and blocks very differently from how the West does. <laughs> so this is another great read, a wonderful, wonderful book that, that I highlighted a lot of also. So this will come in handy for you also if you have any type of past trauma or pain that needs to be resolved. Number 11 is the book Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life by Wayne Dyer. This is my favorite Wayne Dyer book. He had so many, so many books out, but this is my favorite Wayne Dyer book and it's because I really have an admiration and appreciation for Taoism uh, coming out of China. 
Taoists, the reason that I have such an admiration and I have I identify a lot with with Taoism is because of their close connection with nature. So Taoism almost has this kind of shamanic uh, feel to it a little bit. And so that's why my I started to have this inclination to study Taoism more. And what Wayne Dyer here does is he takes the Tao Te Ching, uh, it's the oldest, I think it's one of the oldest uh, texts in the world. <laughs> and he takes that, the 81 verses of the Tao Te Ching, and he tra not just translates them, but he interprets them for a Western audience. I love his interpretation. I love the way that he explains each verse. And what's important about this book is that those 81 simple verses of the Tao Te Ching can completely transform your life, not just because of their simplicity, but also because of the wisdom that they give for everyday life, which sometimes I feel like we really need a little bit of advice for everyday life because I feel like sometimes we just wait for things to completely fall apart for them to, that, to then fix them. But these, these books that come out that show us how to kind of live a more spiritual path in the little moments of life, I love them also. And this is by far my favorite Wayne Dyer book. Number 12 is The Magic Shop by James Dottie. Now, you'll notice this is another storytelling book. I love storytelling. And this book is about James, this is a biography. This is a memoir um, about James Dottie's life and how he met a spiritual guru when he was a teenager and how this woman, the spiritual guru that he, made, that he met in his hometown, how she shaped his life, but then how he kind of temporarily forgot all her teachings. He went on to become a, a rich surgeon and his whole life fell apart and then he kind of had to come back to her teachings. This is such a beautiful book with so much wisdom in it, so, so much wisdom and again, in the form of storytelling. James Dottie's life is incredible also. So you'll love this read. It's a fast read and there's so much wisdom there for your everyday life also. Number 13 is Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Uh, this book uh, I think is also one of the most read spiritual books on the planet. Um, I read this book, uh, the, the most significant thing that this book did for me, uh, basically this book is about Neil Donald Walsh's conversations with divine energy and what he was able to channel through from those conversations. What I love the most about this book is its ability, it really throws the definition of God or an understanding of God on its head from what we've been taught in religious prisms, okay? So if you come from a religious background, but even if you don't, you may have still religious templating on you of understanding God to be a judgmental punishing entity dude with a white beard that's up there you know judging you for your sins and what Neil Donald Walsh does in this book is gives a completely different perspective of what source energy is and this really helped free me not only to understand source energy on in a pure sense but also understand myself uh, in this whole grand prism of things. So Conversations with God, another great read that will change your life. Number 14 is the book Many Lives, Many Masters by Brian Weiss. And this book is all about reincarnation, past lives, and it's about Brian Weiss's story of being a traditionally trained psychotherapist and how his whole life changed when he met a patient that was having so much trouble in her life. She couldn't get out of the, you know, the blocks that she was in. And finally, in one therapy session, he, she kind of spontaneously regressed to a past life and started telling him um, about past life experiences and Brian Weiss's life completely changed. Many uh, Lives, Many Masters is a great book for you to really learn about how we are on this soul journey, a multi-lifetime soul journey. It came into my life when I really needed to understand. I was having some issues with actually, I, I was remembering past live episodes and it was really jarring. This was in a particular difficult time in my spiritual awakening. I was having spontaneous remembering episodes. And so this book really helped me understand the whole past life trajectory and helped me heal and work with those memories as they were coming. Coming up. So this is a great book if you have any interest in learning about past lives and how our souls 
uh, kind of move and evolve lifetime after lifetime and maybe unlocking some issues that you may bring from past lives that you're not aware of. Another great read. Number 15 is the book uh, Kundalini and the Chakras by Genevieve Paulson. This book came to me totally randomly right after I had a spontaneous Kundalini awakening. I didn't even know what the heck Kundalini was when I had a spontaneous awakening. If you don't know what Kundalini is, I'm going to be shooting a video on that. But this book was kind of a miracle in my life because I went through a horrible, <laughs> a very difficult Kundalini awakening and this book was literally life-saving to me. Um, I think I found it spontaneously online and I don't really remember, but this book is a great resource if you feel like you're maybe going through a Kundalini awakening. Kundalini awakenings happen sometimes during a spiritual awakening. Sometimes spiritual awakenings trigger Kundalini awakenings. And so this is the book to have if you're going through, or if you think you're going through a Kundalini awakening, or if you are going through a Kundalini awakening. So this is this was a must have in my library at the time and really helped me. Number 16 is the book Field of Love by Martin Baratella. And <laughs> this book, is actually an exercise in this book is what triggered my kundalini awakening <laughs> so so you know this uh this book was pretty pretty amazing in my life it came to me randomly also uh, martin is uh the husband of my first meditation teacher sarah mclean and so i kind of found him through her I, I started reading this book. I came on one of the exercises that he recommends in the book. I did it. I didn't even know it could awaken your kundalini at the time that I read it, but it did. And so my whole story of kundalini awakening started there. But this book is wonderful. It's his story of kind of um, the journeys that he takes in life in order to find the divine source energy. And it's a great storytelling book also. And it has some great resources and exercises in it, like the one that I did for the Kundalini Awakening. So this is another great read that you may have never heard of. Number 17 is the book Buddha by Deepak Chopra. Um, and I love this book because I really resonate with the story of Buddha. His life story really resonates with me. Um, I have a pull for, uh, for certain aspects of Buddhism. So I loved reading this book. Deepak did a great job of, of storytelling and kind of letting us understand how Siddhartha became Buddha, <laughs> how a prince that was, uh, he was in line for the throne became the Buddha. And it, it follows the very human aspects of Buddha, which which I love to read about. I love to read about the human aspects of spiritual teachers because it's it, their, their lives aren't all fun and dandy. <laughs> Sometimes we read about spiritual teachers after their enlightenment, but I'm more interested in learning about spiritual teachers before their enlightenment because that's where the meat uh, is. And so Buddha is a great book. It's a great, great storytelling by Deepak. And it really gives you an understanding of the very human aspects of awakening and enlightenment. It's a great read that I recommend for everyone. One. Number 18 is another book that you may have never heard of, and it's called The Diving Bell and the Butterfly by Jean-Dominique Bobby. And this book is, first of all, a tearjerker. Um, I read this book initially. It had nothing to do with my spiritual awakening. I read this book when I was in grad school um, because this book is the story, the very real and tragic story of Jean-Dominique Bobby. He was an editor of Elle in France. And he had a massive stroke that caused what's called locked-in syndrome. And so he couldn't move literally except the blinking of one eye. And so this was required reading. I was in grad school uh, becoming a physical therapist. And so this was required reading for us to learn as clinicians how to uh, look at a patient with this kind of condition and how to kind of um, help patients cope with their illnesses. So I read this in grad school, but this is such a beautiful book and it's actually been made into a movie that's also great. And why do I, why do I identify with this book? Because uh, books like this that show the resilience of the human soul, I have another one coming up next uh, that also shows the resilience of the human soul. I love to read real life stories about people that have transcended and have overcome almost what seems like insurmountable odds. And I love and really deeply connect uh, with people that share their stories because what it does is it helps me understand the resilience of the human soul and our capacity to not only survive, but to thrive after horrible things happen to us. So 
This is a wonderful read, a beautiful book, a beautiful book that Jean-Dominique Bobby actually dictated this book with the blink of an eye. That's how extraordinary this book is. So you got to read it. It's, it really helps you understand the resilience of the human soul and, and just this, the, the love, the love that exists for us and from us. Another great read. Number 19 is the book Night by Elie Wiesel. And this is another one that like, like the previous book, The Diving Bell uh, and the Butterfly, this book is also about another extraordinary soul and his journey through Nazi concentration camps. So Night is a short book. It's a beautifully written book. And again, it gives you an understanding of the resilience of the human soul and our capacity to survive and to thrive after horrible things can happen to us in life and, and how we have within us this strength and this capacity to overcome and to thrive and to be joyful even after atrocities can happen to us. So another beautiful read that completely changed my life. Um, it kind of opened my heart. I became more tender and understanding of humanity as a whole through this book, um, Night by Elie Wiesel. Number 20, we're going to end on a lighter note. Number 20 is called Sacred Success by Barbara Stanley. And this book is all about money. <laughs> it's about money, specifically how women have a hard time being abundant and welcoming financial abundance in their life because of guilt and shame and so many other things that women are templated with. So this book was amazing. I love it so much. It really helps women understand how to shift their focus and how to become open to the abundance, how to become open to financial wealth and to financial abundance, how to be open to that without guilt or without shame, without thinking that money is dirty, without thinking that money is evil. So uh, Barbara really does a great job of helping us get through all of the money blocks that a lot of women have. She uses a lot of quotes this book is based on A Course in Miracles, which I didn't recommend in this, in this video. And it's because A Course in Miracles is a really complex book that takes a really long time to read. And I just, on this, on this first video on my recommended books, I didn't want to give you a book that was, you know, uh, that takes a while to read and, and maybe not be, not, isn't the best first book to get, uh, in your spiritual awakening. So, this one, Sacred Success, Barbara Stanny goes into how to overcome your money blocks and welcome abundance by using the lessons of The Course in Miracle. It's a great read. It's a great story. Uh, and so I leave you with Sacred Success as the book number 20. Now I want to hear from you. What spiritual books have changed your life? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel here. Head over to my website to take my heart quiz. See if your heart is blocked and what you can do to open it. And if you enjoyed this video, check it out. There are more videos over here coming up for you. I love you, beautiful soul. I am out.